Good afternoon and good morning wherever you are in the art world. The Art Talks are delighted to have once again Princess Alia Sinusi with us uh, to talk about art <laughs> and life. How are you, Alia? I'm good. Happy to talk about art and life in this crazy <laughs> moment pre-Art Basel. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, Alia, uh, it is an honor for us that you could join us since, you know, you, you are really a very busy agenda until, uh, until Art Basel. But we, uh, since our first encounter and uh, discussing the Socratic quest about life, uh, truth, knowledge, and of course, uh, humanity, I followed your engagement uh, in almost all your extraordinary uh, pursuit of bringing together art and culture. You are patron of, uh, of arts and culture and advisor for many, many philanthropic organizations like the Milken Institute and many more and still find the energy to work for as a VAP uh, representative for us. Could you tell me, where do you find your energy? Well, I have to say, I'm gonna start this question. Um, I didn't really even think about it until <laughs> right now because actually where I found my energy um, and where I found my life and my role was by working on the very first ship of Siwa, the first ship of tolerance. and. Uh, I'm sure people will be watching this in perpetuity, but we're in, um, you know, May of 2023. And yesterday morning, I found out that Ilya Kabakov passed mm -hmm. away. So for Terrible. me, you know, that was my kind of very first project was working with Ilya and his wonderful partner in life, work, or everything, Amelia. And I received this notification from Amelia yesterday um, about Elia's passing. And she's someone with the most incredible strength, the most incredible energy. I mean, I know, yes, I, people always comment on my energy, but she's someone who <laughs> surpasses me. And, uh, you know, I think that it's actually in those relationships that that's where I gain my energy. I wake up um, not every day, we're all humans, um, you know, but almost every day feeling excited. And even when I'm like in despair or I'm exhausted by a project, but just, you know, I'm invigorated by the fact that like art can change the world. Um, and when there have been difficult moments, um, you know, it's been well documented that I was extremely um, distraught by uh, Brexit and then Trump all happening in this like kind of insane year and, and within you know these months of each other like what gave me that strength to go on was thinking that art and culture could change the world um and that's what i believe and that's what i hope and that's what i hope for all of us yes actually you you you're right we when our first our first time we met you and i wrote about you know about your life, about who you were, you, I asked you who inspired you, and uh, you told me Elia and Emilia Kabakov. And yes, it is, it is, and thanks to you, I met them. I met Emilia, I because the the the, the ship of tolerance was yeah. here in Zug. Yes, exactly. And, and uh, that was incredible. You you're, you were here actually at the beginning. I didn't know about the project until you told me. Yeah. <laughs> And then I met the uh, director of the Kunsthaus in Zug. It's incredible, incredible yeah. loss. And uh, I really, you know, we are also, th this is, you know, it's, it's really, really sad. Yeah. But uh, as you said, this, 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 this um, what, you, what you said before, it was also beautiful because thanks to amazing people that our, our energy is yeah. in is you know driven by this way. it's the only yeah. way it's the only way that you can like kind of revive and really you know pick yourself up and do that and I think that you know for me I mean obviously it's like also like you know kind of a natural thing I mean that's more for medical doctors but it's also about like how you regenerate yourself and how you um take your energy take your rest um, and really think about how to move forward in the world. And I think, you know, somebody like an Elia, um, 
was an, you know, was an incredible man, continues to be an incredible man in our, our memories. And, you know, also at this particular moment. Um, so I know, I, I no longer uh, work with the Milken Institute, but for example, when you, uh, we had these talks with like very prominent businessmen, but talking about art and culture, um, it was a really interesting thing to then also hear the way artists respond. And artists can be incredibly analytical, incredibly thoughtful, and, you know, can talk about subjects related to like the very nuts and bolts of the world and the economy. And so Elia, for example, um, was somebody when you asked, you know, about the war, the current war, you know, happening now with um, uh, Russia and Ukraine, you know, he's somebody who was born in what is now Ukraine, but was then what was now we consider Russia because it was the former Soviet Union. And he just had these like incredibly thoughtful, poignant responses. And really it was more just about sadness. And it's like when you hear Emilia and she's given many public statements, so I'm not kind of revealing anything confidential. I mean, it, it's really sadness about the way that the world um, has evolved. But at the same time, this perseverance, um, you know, you keep going, you keep making beautiful art, you keep working, you keep doing. It is, it is touching, uh, Alia. It is, it, is, it is true. You know, we're living, uh, as you say, every day we, we see uh, terrible things happening, you know, very close to us. That's the problem. You know, it's, it's actually this war made us feel even, you know, much angrier because we, we, we all thought we could do something about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, we can't. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a, but, uh, but again, it's, a, it's, it's all to go forward and to, 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 to be passionate about something and to try to try to go forward. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Emilia, it is, it is incredible. You know, last year we were in Capri for, for Elia's uh, exhibition. And uh, we talked with Emilia, uh, with the, uh, it was really beautiful. She really is it. somebody that makes you, yes, go forward, <laughs> no matter what, no matter what. She's like, like I'm, people tell me I respond to emails and messages quickly. She's like on another level. <laughs> No, but you do, you do. You're, you're, yeah. you know, we're in Rome together, Alia. It, it's, it's incredible. It's, it, wherever you are, I send you a little message, and I'm like, okay, Alia, now is sleeping. It's the other side of the world, and you are like, Carolina, are you, <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> you're amazing too. But tell, tell me, um, Alia, uh, what do you, you know, what inspired you? Because you told me about, you know, you, your, your family, and it was something normal for you. But what inspired you to be such an age, such an heroine? You know, for, for us, you, you see, I think for the next generation, it is so important to have somebody that, you know, to be inspired. Mm -hmm. And you are somebody that I have to truly admit, you inspire people to go right. forward. So, I mean, for me, it's, it's more about like living with being really committed to what I do. Like, I really believe, um, I believe that we can make the world a better place through art and culture. And um, when I did have this really difficult moment after um, the, the, you know, after the election day for when Trump was elected, I really lost, I lost hope completely. And I remember seeing Hans Ulrich and I was like, crying every day and I was like this totally like despondent really I was just exhausted I could barely sleep like and he was like we need your optimism you can't be this person and, and I was like okay but I just need this moment I need this moment to be depressed um but no I mean seriously like I do I just you know it sounds so cheesy but I really believe that like art and artists and culture and what culture can do to a place like you just look at Saudi and the way Saudi has changed now and is continuously changing. Of course, it's not only about art there. It's about, you know, fundamental freedoms that have been given mm -hmm. uh, to women and uh, to just people, to humanity. Um, and that's what changes the world. But I really think that art was a fundamental building block of that. 
So if we can do that in anywhere else, and even if places that seem hopeless, you know, if you have that little element, you know, maybe that's what gives a person hope when they walk through the streets. Um, just to think that, I mean, who knows? I, I am very fortunate that I've never had to, you know, live in a place that is like constantly bombarded by, you know, bullets or bombs. But I think being in the U.S. right now is really difficult. I have friends who, you know, feel very under siege and, you know, being involved in the arts really helps them. So mm -hmm. it's a catharsis. It's a therapy. Uh, it's part of your mental health. Yes. And as you said, it's not anymore about geography, but what yeah. we, what we, we see more and more, it's a, it's a local global, uh, you know, community mm -hmm. echo ethos that, you know, we are all uh, seeing, you know, there are no more boundaries. Now with through a Zoom, we are here mm -hmm. through, uh, through technology, we can connect anywhere in the world and, and make the world hopefully a better place. Yeah. But, but, you know, you, you've been doing so much, um, your engagement in the social art change in Saudi. Could you tell us a bit more, you know, and especially about you know, uh, about the last, the Biennale that was. Yeah, so we've just um, finished uh, a week yes. ago. Yes. The Islamic Arts Biennale, which you did this incredible issue on. Thank you so much and congratulations. It was so thoughtful. It was so interesting. And you really covered so much. Um, and, you know, I think. I will be very happy to hear it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. It was, it was wonderful. Um, so, you know, I think, of course, the Contemporary Biennale was this incredible change-making moment because it was looking at contemporary art in the context of the world, so Saudi contemporary artists in the context of the international art world, but looking at contemporary art in general in the context of the world. So it wasn't just about Saudi artists. It was about much more than that, which I think is really incredible because it wasn't just like a topical or regional um, show that Philip Tenari um, uh, was the curator of. And then with the Islamic Biennale, what was so radical was that it was so much about, of course, Islam, as the name suggests, Islamic Arts Biennale, um, a topic that, you know, in Saudi would have been ta absolutely taboo five years ago. I mean, you could never like reinterpret Islam. And this wasn't a reinterpretation of Islam, but it could have been seen as such, right? Um, it was about asking artists to interpret their feelings of religion and what they had as spiritual system. So not necessarily about organized religion, not about Islam on a macro level, but really on a micro level. It's like, what does Islam mean to me? You know, how do I practice? How do I imbue it into my daily life? So the idea of praying, this, you know, the prostration, um, the uh, the call to prayer, uh, rituals, the, the the cleansing, purifying rituals um, before one prays, um, and uh, the act of sacrifice, the act you know, and kind of such an incredible piece um, was the Harun Gonzali piece, um, and I think that to me is perhaps the most emblematic, and of course, I know it also like it's going to be. You know, it's the one that's the most Instagrammed, I think, now. But it really is such a powerful piece because it's about the ways in which you become a better person and then you take that back to your community. And now it's reinterpreted three generations later through art or two generations later through art. So the story is the artist, Harun Gansali, made this work based on a uh, an imam who had uh, he's from a south um south african community of south asian descent so the you know indian pakistani bangladeshi you know sub the subcontinent you call it um so this incredible imam um imam haroon uh he had gone to saudi arabia and studied and uh he went back to south africa and he believed deeply in um social rights and of course equality of of the races and he fought against apartheid and he was murdered by um pro-apartheid uh kind of 
white supremacists, as you say in America, white supremacists, um, and the police, and the police, and and their their uh, their helpers. And the piece is by the artist called Harun Gansali, who was named after this imam, um, is about how this imam believed deeply in the beliefs of Islam, of um, you know equality, of uh, social justice, you know words that in phrases we hear now over and over, and it was the procession of forty thousand mourners that were going up a mountain to his uh, his funeral um, and his burial, his funeral, and it was it's just so powerful because it's about so much more than if we just look at Islam or Saudi Arabia or you know it's about the a global context, and I think that's what's really important about what's happening in Saudi now is it's about also what this place means in a global context. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, you know, I saw uh, all of this uh, wonderful works of art, of course, through the pages of the art talk and about, you know, from, you know, I'm, I'm joking through the Instagram, as you said, but it is, it is, it must have been extraordinary to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I wish next time, hopefully, I will be, I will be there too. But uh, the, the, this, this, um, how, how long did it start? You know, it started in, in March, January. In January, yeah. So the um, and it would like broke like every every um, expectation of um, of numbers and, and attendance. And you know, I think they had by the very last day. I don't have the final count yet from one week ago, but it was more than five hundred thousand visitors. Mm -hmm. um, and what was so powerful was, of course, it's like a lot of a lot of um, a lot of locals. Um, so yeah. But again, also after after COVID, uh, you know, I was there uh, mm -hmm. just before COVID. So you know, it, it must have been, you know, this as you said, this this sensation when I was talking to the artist and I met one of um, one of Shona that is uh, in my heart mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Daniel Salah. Uh, it, it's beautiful, you know. It's it's such a, a, an in, in enthusiasm and a passion for art that we haven't seen. You know, here I think it's it's beautiful. It's it truly uh, beautiful to so to so you know to to meet this artist that they've been also you know in a connection with uh, with Switzerland. I think there was a, a big uh, uh, commitment between these two countries, mm -hmm. but it was uh, it was beautiful. So now, uh, Alia, how how tell me uh, a bit what, what so you are very busy to do Art Basel, which is going to be yeah. in a couple of weeks. I'm so excited. And funnily enough, like actually on that subject, because I think so much of the work I do with Basel and with Saudi is about kind of bringing the worlds together. Um, and in Basel and in Zurich, there are two shows um, very much related to my work in, in Saudi and in the wider Middle East. So in Zurich, you have a show at the Kunsthaus Zurich called Reorientations. And it's about... Um, an interpretation of Islamic art on how it influenced various artists. So for example, Kandinsky was mm -hmm. extremely um, kind of taken with and in, impressed by and inspired by Islamic art. So he's in the show and this is at, like, you know, a major Western museum. Then you also have in Basel a show, not going to pronounce it. It's KBGH. You, Carolina, you can do the German. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, um, and so at that show, it's called Under Evaporating Suns, and it's about artists from the Middle East, including two Saudi artists. So I think that's really interesting. Um, you also then, for example, here in Paris, I'm, I'm in Paris right now, um, you have a show opening on Thursday at Camel Menor, the gallery yes. with Hamid Al Faraj, um, and Camel, uh, in, um, uh, kind of encountered Hamid Al Faraj um at the suggestion of me and other people when he was doing Nur Riyadh so it's about like kind of integrating um these worlds and then of course in Basel itself you'll have kind of an incredible presentation of galleries and um you know what they're bringing to the show and we hope people come and buy um and we want them to uh buy and acquire and and you know walk halls and discover and curators to discover artists and put them in museums and 
Um, it's very exciting. And you have, you know, Basquiat of the Byler. I mean, Basel is just so full, you know, it is so incredibly kind of rich and has these amazing, you know, kind of amazing things that happen that it makes people so excited to be. And I love being in Switzerland. You live in Switzerland. I love being in Switzerland. Um, I, you know, and so I think it's just like a very special week. It is, it is. But last year also you did an amazing program with the Moana Shona. We were, we were yeah, saying- Yeah, exactly. Uh, it was beautiful. It was really good. And Volta, which is yeah. a small part of Basel, but it was really Well, and then good. you had at Uther, like at Uther Gallery, you yes. Had Ather was showing in statements, which is the young, for those of you watching the young gallery section, you know, it's really, it's great. And, uh, and this year, as you said, there is this exhibition for everybody to go in Zurich, at the Kunsthaus in Zurich. And also, did you, did there is any, any particular thing in Basel that we, we could. Uh... So then a KBGH, this other, let me, yes. as I'm, I'll tell you, it's a Kunst. I'm. Uh, KBGH, um, Basel. Bad with the so Kulturstiftung <laughs> Basel H. Geiger. Kulturstiftung Basel. So um, this is a an amazing um, okay. space in Basel that yes. was founded in 2018 <laughs> by a private collector by Sibyl uh, Geiger to provide a forum for art and culture. Um, okay. Free of charge, incredible space um, by this, you know, and that is, um, you know, and that's like the theme of Basel, these like really, really special private collectors who are so philanthropic. I mean, the Kunstmuseum is the oldest private museum in the world. Uh, sorry, oldest public museum. Oldest public museum in the world. Yes. Um, and so then you have this space, like this KBGH, that's now presenting a show all about what is the Khalij, you know, it's like incredible. So that, yeah. not, to, not to miss, not to miss. And as I say, the entire week maybe is not enough to see everything in Basel. I have to say there are so many amazing things. But before before uh, I, I also would like to I'll ask put it in you. The chat. I'm not sure if everyone can see this when they see the recording, but I'll put yes. it I'll put it there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. But you pronounce it perfectly, better than than me. I I can never, you know, speak German. <laughs> thank you, Alia. Uh, one one thing, and, and between all of uh, this this art um, art uh, commitments that you have, a, an ordinary day for you, what would it be? There is no ordinary day for me. There is literally no ordinary. Um, I wake up, I do my Wordle. Well, actually now, stupidly, I've started doing my Wordle before I go to sleep, which is okay. not, that's not a good one. <laughs> um, so I wake up, I have like a half a bottle of water, um, have a mini espresso, and I answer all my WhatsApps and my emails, but like immediately, um, because otherwise it gives me anxiety to start my day. <laughs> <laughs> During COVID, I'll be very honest, like I used to be somebody who would like wake up and like go to my exercise class or go do a walk right away. And during COVID, um, it made me very, it gave me a lot of anxiety, like the idea of waking up. I don't know why. Um, so I now try not to force myself out of the house or have a meeting early. Um, mm -hmm. And it's actually something I learned from Mark Spiegler, who is our former global director of our Basel. Mark was like, I refused. He's a very big exercise person. So he wakes up and does a run and does like a whole thing. But he's like, I refuse to do morning meetings because the morning is for myself. And I do my exercise and I answer my emails and I work, but I don't see people in the morning because the obligation is, you know, kind of in, in that, that stress. So mm -hmm. I've decided that that's also not me. And then I invariably will have like a mid-morning meeting zooms um depending on where i am on the planet i do not recommend ever trying to work between la and hong kong or new york and hong kong it's impossible to schedule a zoom like impossible you'll never be able to have dinner or you'll never be able to sleep because you'll have to wake up at like 6 a.m in the morning um but uh it's like you know really just like being engaged my daily routine is about being engaged Yes, wow. Beautiful though. It's a beautiful <laughs> engagement. <laughs> but they never, as you said, it never 
uh, is the, the most beautiful part. Yeah, of, of I mean, I'm very excited. My yes. next project after um, after Basel, you know, we have, of course, like there's the Serpentine, the, the pavilion opening, and I'm very involved with the Serpentine. And then also with K11, the art foundation in, uh, in, in Hong Kong, um, I'm, you know, going to be working with them as the chairman of their international council. And we're doing a big launch in September. So I'm very excited. Uh, mm. I love anything that brings me to either Hong Kong or Seoul. So I'm super excited um, to be able to kind of be back in Asia in the, in the early, early autumn. Fantastic. So quite, quite a busy summer. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Now it gives me like, I usually it would be like, oh, summer's like quiet. And then we rev up in September. Now I have something I have to get done in September, which means I have to work all summer. So <laughs> Okay, go. so let, let's hope we can bring you to the south of Italy and meet us in the, in the, in the Costiera. Where you walk. <laughs> but uh, no, thank you, Alia. Thank you. You know, I know it is it is a busy, very busy week. So I really appreciate for you to to be uh, with us today and also to remember Ilia, which was beautiful from you since yeah. we met met them. I you. know, and it's so very relevant to you and to me and. Well, to everyone, you know, he uh, he was an amazing man, and Emilia is an incredible woman, and we should thank these people for their incredible efforts for all of us. Thank you, thank you, Alia. Have a wonderful. I know you have other things to do as soon as we stop. Well, tonight so I'm going to say a little other thing is, and also yes. very relevant to Ely and Emilia because they had a major participation here in Paris at the Grand Palais, but also at the Pompidou. It's the 120 year anniversary. I don't think you can see 120 year anniversary. Yes. Of the um, Friends of the Centre Pompidou tonight. So mm -hmm. again, it's about you know supporting institutions and about the ways in which those institutions change our lives. Beautiful, beautiful. So please, you know, we can't wait to see you physically in next couple of days. I know. <laughs> and. So and be ready for a puzzle. Thank you, Alia. Thank Bye. you. Thank Afternoon. You. Bye. Grazie. Bye.